and Plymouth Argyle are expecting their biggest crowd of the season at Home Park tomorrow as they look to book a place in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. Yes, they take on Derby County in a fifth round tie, which is bound to revive a few memories. While well, Martin Dean's been to Home Park to soak up some of the pre-match atmosphere. Yes, this is what it's all about, of course. Well, almost. This is actually a replica. But Plymouth Argyle's players could now be just four wins away from getting their hands on the real thing. It's not the closest they've come to winning the FA Cup, of course. Back in 1984, they reached the semi-finals. And those with an interest in lucky omens will point out that they had to beat Derby County on the way. There were subtle differences, of course, apart from the shorter shorts and the longer hair. The match was actually a quarter-final. Derby were in the top flight and Argyle were then a struggling third division side. The attention was nice because you know, the media was there and it was in those days it was you know, far less than what it is now. The club is so much better run now, um, financially better off and everything. So as players we got the attention and that was, that was great. And sort of, everybody was keyed up to do well because of that as well. But of course FA Cup history doesn't necessarily repeat itself. I don't like looking back sometimes. I don't believe you can actually walk forward looking back over your shoulder. So um, that's great. It's tradition. It's part of this club's history. They should be very proud of it. What I'm trying to do now is make that yesterday's newspaper, if I can, and make sure that tomorrow we look bright and we're, the future's green and white. After a goalless draw at home park, Argyle went on to beat Derby in a replay before their FA Cup dream was shattered by Watford in the semi-final. But could today's stars improve on that record and go all the way to the final? I think it's possible. Um, it's just three games away. They've, they're going to play a side which are in the same division. They've got every chance of beating them at home. Uh, they're going well. The spirit's good. They've got new players in which are blending in very well as well. So I, I think they've got every chance of uh, certainly reaching the semi-final like we did and hopefully on the day going all the way, which would be great. You know, we can all dream. It's about making those dreams come reality. And uh, I can't wait for the game to start because all this hype's getting to me now. I just want to get on with the game and make sure that we give a, as good a performance as we can. As for the fans, well, it'll come as no great surprise to find that they're already dreaming of a possible trip to the new Wembley Stadium. Sport now and on a big FA Cup weekend for Plymouth Argyle, here's Dave Gibbons, who's been at Home Park today. Thanks very much. Well, this time tomorrow we'll know whether Plymouth Argyle are in the last eight of the FA Cup. First, they've got to dispose of championship leaders Derby County here at Home Park in the fifth round. Well, 23 years ago, the Pilgrims actually beat Derby 1-0 in a cup replay to reach the semi-finals. And playing right back for the Green and Whites that evening in that replay was Gordon Nisbet, who joins us now on Spotlight. Thanks for coming along, Gordon. What are your uh, abiding memories of that cup replay at the old baseball ground where Derby used to play? Yeah, I mean, first thing was when we actually ran out, the fantastic support that we'd taken up there. And uh, the game, all games tend to be a bit of a blur. What about the goal that won it for you? <laughs> Scored by Andy Rogers. Yeah, a bit of a fluke, but um, <laughs> all morning he'd been trying to practice on the ground near the hotel and he couldn't get it right, couldn't get a corner in for us to practice finishing and on the night he goes and does that <laughs> right over his outreaching right arm what about tomorrow gordon here at home park it's been raining all day the pitch will probably play a big part in in proceedings what do you think will happen i think our will win tomorrow i think the crowd the crowd here behind them it's, that's worth a goal and uh, although our have got problems with their injuries and things um derby county apparently reading this week have got some problems behind the scenes with uh, bonuses for their players. So that could have a big effect, especially in an FA Cup. Well, let's hope you're right, Gordon. Thanks for the memories. Thanks for joining us, Gordon Isbert. Thank you. OK. Action from the Watford-Ipswich game on the way, but first it's the all-championship tie between Plymouth and Derby. Plymouth managed by Ian Holloway and championship leaders Derby led by Billy Davis. Commentary by Martin Fisher. When the sides met back in October here, it was a game full of incident. Plymouth won it by three goals to one. They had two penalties and a man sent off in that one. It was a feisty affair. Let's see if this one follows that pattern. Ebanks Blake looking left and finding Sinclair. The bounce wasn't true, but can he get the shot away? Yes, he can. And it required a good stop by Stephen Bywater. Scott Sinclair, the young man on loan from Chelsea, scored an absolute beauty against Barnett in the last round and nearly repeated it here. Now it's touch. And the 
McCormick giving Gallen something to chase after. And Leacock is struggling here, and Gallen goes down, and a penalty is given. Well, Derby were always struggling. Moore and Leacock in all kinds of difficulty. How much of a connection is there? It's Gallen against Bywater, and it just finds the corner. Bywater guessed correctly, got a touch, but there was sufficient pace on the ball to see it creep over the line, and Plymouth are in front, and for the third successive round in this competition, they find the net by the penalty spot. Cormick looking to put further pressure on Leacock and Moore, the clearance down as far as Sinclair. Harvey have already been warned about him, he's picked out Gallant, shot blocked by Moore, might come out as far as Gosling. Kamara slow to close him down, Gosling! Oh, what a save by Bywater! Well, the other 17-year-old close to scoring. Bywater prevented a strike from Sinclair early on. Gosling easily away from Kamara, that was going in, and Bywater fingertips it behind. In comes the corner. Moore doesn't get the ball away. There was leaning, it's another penalty! Another penalty for Plymouth Argyle. This time, it's the other centre defender, Darren Moore, swung in by Gallant. Moore leaning all over Timar. Stephen Bywater just having a word here with Kevin Gallant, just trying to psych him out. Saved by Bywater. How important will that incident prove to be? Will that be the springboard for a derby recovery? He manages just trying to reorganise his team, I think. It's like he's going into a 4-4-2 formation rather than the 4-5-1 he has been used. The volume is on high. He banks Blake for Plymouth. Johnson against Nallis. Comes out as far as Timar. Here's Gallant. And now Norris bombing forward. Here's Sinclair. Good ball in, Bywater just as enough to tip it behind. Three players arriving in the middle. Great move by Plymouth, and it's a familiar story. As Plymouth win another corner, and Derby drag everybody back to try and keep them out. Johnson went in for Derby, and these two again, and eventually it's hacked away by Kamara. More unconvincing defending by Derby County. Leacock over the top, Macken looking to try and get in behind the defenders, Jonathan Macken here for Derby, and for the first time this afternoon Luke McCormick is forced to make a save, now got in between Connolly and Timar then Macken, the shot was high, Norris gets the better of Biscard, and it's fallen here for Nannis, late challenge by Moore, and that will be a yellow card, for the Derby captain, for the challenge on the Plymouth captain. Moore's difficult afternoon goes on and on. Ewanks Blake, three Derby players after him. And Barnes stops him. Bishgod. Now he's wrestled to the ground by the Plymouth man. It has been a, a full-blooded cup tie. Howard's touch, then from Johnson, here's Macken, appeals for handball, waved away by referee Mike Dean. Billy Davis down beneath me, he's furious. Referee Dean has given Plymouth two penalties, but no penalty there for Derby. Meanwhile, here come Plymouth with Gallant, goes down on the challenge of Moore, free kick given, Moore has to be careful, he's already been booked. Plymouth have five players in the penalty area. Derby again have brought everybody back to defend it. Norris leaves it for Sinclair to whip it in very deep. And by Water again with a clean pair of hands. And a quick kick that is so quick. It's too quick. Nobody in a white shirt was even beyond the halfway line there. Another free kick here. 
Gallon has gone down, Moore's the closest player, it's a red card. I said less than a minute ago, Darren Moore had to be careful. Derby are down to ten men. And Michael Johnson gets stripped and gets ready to come on. Given away, Howard looking for Macken, that's a wonderful ball. Can Macken do it here for Derby? Macken! Oh, great defensive challenge. Well, Jonathan Macken has had the best two chances they fashioned. A challenge by Timar, just enough. And the Derby committing bodies forward. Might they get caught out here as Plymouth have possession? The flag has stayed down. Norris is in behind Derby. And Plymouth have two waiting the centre in the middle. Derby are stretched. Sinclair's header! And it's in! Off the post, and the 17-year-old has done it again. And the man that has found him, the man that has had a terrific match, David Norris. Derby punished as they went searching for the equaliser. They were stretched and Plymouth made them pay. You know, credit to the home side in opening 45 minutes. They handled the, the conditions better than what we did. And uh, they certainly uh, had more of the game than what we did. But second half, I felt, was much, much better. And uh, we may have had a a penalty claim myself, second half, which again, I'm looking forward to looking at. The sending off of Darren Moore, um, the cameras didn't catch it. Do you expect another yellow card? Well, pretty much, yeah, because uh, the only people who, who saw it, what happened was uh, me, the linesman and Darren Moore. And Darren Moore didn't complain. It was pretty much uh, all the other players who hadn't seen it. So, you know, that's what happened. Uh, I can't really say, I, I've gone to turn and he's blocked my run. And being the size he is, he's a big unit and, uh, you know, I couldn't stay on my feet. That was as good a performance as we've had all season and, and you know, I'm delighted. I think we've thoroughly earned the right against the team that's at the top of our division.